Thank you, Jesus. <coughs> Heavenly Father, we are before your throne. We've come, we've worshipped you. We've ministered unto you. We've sang your word. And we pray right now in Jesus' name for you to teach us. Teach us your word. Holy Spirit, you are the author of the Bible. You are the one that is the revealer. You bring forth revelation that the logos of this word the written word can come into our hearts and become rhema. Become revelation. And I ask you and we ask you together to give us revelation right now in the mighty name of Jesus. We pray and we believe. Amen. Amen. Today I'm going to give you two sessions. I will minister for 45 minutes and then we'll take a short break and we'll come back for another 45 minutes. I want you to open your Bible to the second chapter of the book of Acts. When I was going to Bible school, the Lord spoke to me as I was preparing to go into ministry. And he gave me something from his word that has always helped me with every church that I have ever pioneered. And I've started several throughout my life. Sorry. I've started several throughout my life. And now not only do we start churches, but we also have a Hope and Faith for All Nations local church Bible school. And that's one of the reasons that I'm here in Tanzania. I'm in, in Malawi. I, in the last two years, I have been in Tanzania several times. And I'm working with a bishop there, an archbishop by the name of Charles Jingala. And he has a hundred churches that are under him. And we have started this Bible school for he, he and his churches. And today through projectors, through MB3 and all different methods. We are sending that out to the churches. It is an eight-week course to help people to get grounded in the basics of the Word of God. And we're going to do the same thing here in Malawi. Hallelujah! We met with bishops, we met with prof prophetess, we met with apostles. And they also believe that it's time for that to come. And so I will be coming at different times in the future. And we're going to have a great time together. It's one thing to get people saved, and that's the most important thing. But after we are born again, 
It's important that we are discipled. And disciples are ones that learn the word of God. You cannot grow in the Lord without teaching. Preaching is proclaiming truth. Preaching is what we do in crusades. It's inspirational. It's motivational. You may read one or two scriptures. And then you spend time on that. Teaching is explaining truth. You find out why you believe what you believe. You don't believe it just because somebody said it. But you can go back to the word of God and you can say this is what God has said. Jesus said you will know the truth and the truth will make you free. You understand that when you are born again your spirit becomes perfect. There is no growth that takes place in your spirit. Because the Holy Spirit is not a baby Holy Spirit. He is complete. He's all love. He's all joy. He's all peace. He's all righteousness. He's everything. And when you got born again, the Holy Spirit came to live in your human spirit. So in your human spirit, you are perfect. You're righteous. You're full of love. Your joy, your peace. Your patience. Your goodness. You're all of the things of God. That's who you are in the spirit. But you also have a soul. And the soul and the spirit are not the same thing. In the Bible, in 1 Thessalonians 5.23, it says that you are spirit, soul, and body. And so the Christian growth takes place in the soul. The truth of God's word it comes into your soul. It goes into your spirit. It hits that nature of who you are. And all of a sudden you get a revelation. Wow. You see it. You see the love of God. You see the peace of God. You see the joy of God. You see who you are in Christ. You know, there. I've asked this question before. People say, there's no one like you, Jesus. There's no one like you, Jesus. How many of you have heard that? How many of you have said that? How many of you, let me ask this question, believe that? Some of you may be kind of... Is that true? Is it? 
Well, I see we got some teaching to do today. Let's go to 1 John 4, 17. We'll open there. Are you ready? 1 John 4. And verse 17. Chapter 4, verse 17. Yeah, go ahead. Now notice what it says. Herein is our love made perfect. That we may have boldness. That we may have what? Do you know how many Christians are afraid of this day? But the Bible says you can have boldness. That we may have boldness in the day of judgment. How could that be? Now look at the rest of the verse. Because as he is, as he is, as he is, as Jesus is, as Jesus is, so are we. Hallelujah. Now you just told me. You, you, you just said to me, there's no one like Jesus. How many of you said that? But is that what the Bible says? What does the Bible say? As he is, as he is, so are we. So there's an example of why we need to know the Word of God. You've heard somebody say, and, and it sounds good. Oh, there's no one like you, Jesus. There's no one like you, Jesus. But that's not what the Bible says. The Bible says, as he is. So are we. Look at your neighbor and say, you're like Jesus. Some of you might have had a little fear to say that, but the Bible says that. Now, yes, I understand from the standpoint he is God. And you are not God. He's the one that we worship. And we don't receive worship. We do not receive. So from the standpoint of God, we are not God. The creation is never as high as the Creator. But remember, He was a son. Now, here's something else. I'm just a servant. I'm just a servant. I'm a servant. How many of you servants? Are you just a servant? Are you just a servant? Hmm. Well, go to Galatians 4. Are you sure you're just a servant? 
Bodi ni zona ndi ino ndi mtumi kuamba akati akunisiani chapter 4 And look what Paul wrote So we saw something that John wrote now let's look at what Paul wrote. It says in verse 4 Galatians 4. Okay, go ahead. All right, Galatians 4. You want to see this in the Bible? You know, the, this is the most important time of the whole service. The teaching of God's Word. If you're going to be a strong Christian, you must know this word, and I'm showing you why. Now look what it says. In verse 6, and because you are sons, you're what? You're sons. Now continue to read. God has sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts crying, Abba, Father. Now, look at verse 7. And remember, it says, Wherefore thou art no more a servant. Hello. But you just all told me your servants. But what does the Bible say? What does the New Testament say? You see, the problem with the church is the church has been grounded in Old Testament stuff. And that's why many churches are not strong. Because they don't, because they don't have New Testament revelation. You understand? Paul said you're not a servant. He said, you're a son. Your position is not servant. Your position is son. So look at your neighbor and say, hello, son. Well, Paul writes to the Corinthian church and, and he says that we're sons and daughters. Hallelujah. Now, Peter called himself a servant. But here's the difference. Here's the difference. In the Old Testament, they were servants that served. But in the New Testament, we are sons and daughters that serve. Can you see the difference? Here's another question. I'm just a sinner. I'm a sinner. I'm a sinner saved by grace. I'm a sinner. How many uh, of you say that I'm a sinner. You say I'm a sinner. 
Nani ya uri nini washimwa? Is that what the Bible says? What the Bible is going to show you. Do you want to go back to the Bible? Do you want to go back to the I can see why we need some teaching. Are you still a sinner? How many of you believe you're still a sinner? Some of you kind of getting halfway up. You're not sure. How could you still be a sinner if as he is, so are you? What? Was Jesus a sinner? Was Jesus a sinner? Would you ever call Jesus a sinner? Was Jesus just a servant? Was Jesus righteous? Was Jesus a son? So what does the Bible say about you? Well, let's go to 2 Corinthians 5. You got your shouting shoes on today? I know you do, you've been dancing. What does the Bible say? I'm not talking about what does religion say, what does the Bible say? I mean, let me ask this question. Could we ever really have confidence? You know, what if I, as an apostle, stood on that platform last night, like I did, thinking I'm a sinner? Or what if prophetess continued to minister, oh, I'm, I'm an unworthy sinner? Would you be able to really have the kind of boldness that you have? The Bible says that we are to come boldly before the throne. Boldly. But if you think that you're a sinner, how can you come boldly? If you still think you're a sinner, how could you ever deal with the devil? Because they'll always tell you there's some reason that you can't cast it out. Do you understand? So, so what does the Bible say? Does the Bible say we're still sinners? Look at 2 Corinthians 5. And verse 21. For God made him to be sin for us. Amen. For God made him to be sin for us. Now, let me ask you this question. Was Jesus a sinner? No. He wasn't, was he? So where did he get the sin from? Look at your neighbor and say he got it from you. He got it from you. So if Jesus got the sin from you and he took that sin on the cross, why do you think you still have it? Did he take it or did he not take it? 
Did he take it? I know, didn't I? Now, this is where we understand spirit, soul, body. Let me say this. No one goes to hell because of sin action. Man goes to hell because of sin nature. I promise you there's not one person here that is living every single day perfect. Is anybody living perfect? Probably not. But Jesus lived perfect. And he was the only one that could. You understand? He lived perfect. But you and I, we don't live perfect. Well, what if there was some unconfessed sin? You just told me you're not living perfect every day. So what does that mean? Does that mean you've got to spend your whole day thinking, oh, what did I do yesterday, and what did I do the day before, and what did I do the day before, and forgive me for this, and forgive me for this, and forgive me for this, and forgive, and forgive, and forgive. You could never do all that. And you could never go back into all your past and remember all the rotten stuff you did. You could never do it. You understand? So what happens is that when we are born again, that nature of sin that is in us in our spirit is taken out how many of you have the Holy Spirit in you if you're a sinner how could he live in you how could he live in you if you're still a sinner? Do you understand? This is why man and God did not have relationship. The sin broke the relationship. It was a sin nature that came into Adam when Adam committed that sin. When he ate of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, he was actually born with a, there was a sin nature birthed into him. And, and, and that's what brought the separation. Can you see that? And from that point on, man throughout the Old Testament could not have God living in him. So man in the Old Testament to have a relationship with God through senses. Now, man in the Old Testament was saved. When they believed in the coming Redeemer. But man was not born again until Jesus came and died on the cross, went to hell and raised from the dead. 
We are in the New Testament. In the Old Testament, the Holy Spirit couldn't live in man. He would come upon, he was with man. Jesus said that. He said the Holy Spirit's with you, but he's going to be in you. And so when Jesus rose from the dead, from that point on, he appeared to the disciples, breathed upon them, and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. That time they were born again. And when, and when Jesus was raising from the dead, the Bible says in Luke 16, there's a place called Abraham's bosom. And this is the place where all those Old Testament saints went when they died. And then Jesus came and put eternal life into all those Old Testament saints and they got born again. Hallelujah. And they're in heaven today. They're there. Some of our loved ones are there. Praise God. Hallelujah. But you understand. If you're a sinner, the Holy Spirit can't live in you. And see, the problem is that we don't identify with who we are in the Spirit. That's the problem. We have a soul that needs to get itself renewed with the Word of God. Jesus said, you know the truth. Yes, I would move that whole lady. And it'll make you free. You're already free in the spirit. There's no devil there. There's nothing bad there. There's nothing bad in your spirit. You are perfect. Hallelujah. But look. Look at this scripture. For God made him to be sin for us. Who knew no sin. Jesus never sinned. He was made sin. He never sinned. He was made sin. So tell your neighbor Jesus was made sin with your sin. That you might be made 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 the righteousness now how righteous are you? You ready for a shock? Righteousness. You know what righteousness means? To have the ability to stand in the presence of God without a sense of guilt or inferiority as if you had never sinned before. Wow. Hallelujah. I tell you what, that changed my life. That changed my life. So, how righteous are you? Now look what it says. That we might receive the righteousness, that we might be made the righteousness of God. God. How righteous are you? 
Kwani ni ndorunga mabwanji. Anybody know? Ali 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 bana kuziwa. Mimi nadi ndorunga mabwake. How righteous are you? Ili ndorunga mabwanji, bwana ni mzanga kwa sulu. That was the trust. Come here. Come here. Hurry up. Run up here real quick. Tell us how righteous you are. You got an awesome smile on your face. Come here. Come here in front of the camera. We want everybody to see your nice smile. I am righteous because of Christ Jesus. Okay, you're righteous because of Christ Jesus, but how righteous are you? When I believe in Him. You believe in him, but how by, how by faith. but how righteous are you? By faith. Who is your standard of righteousness? Man's yeah. righteousness or what did you tell the Jan sex you? Christ. Whoa. God. You are as righteous as God. Dino, Orunga, Mangati Mulungu. Hallelujah. Can I say that again? Nileneso. Now, that's what your Bible said. Bible do Nileneso. Look in your Bible, look what it says. Bible do Nileneso. That we might be made the righteousness of God. Muti di Bangido kaya Orunga Chilunga Mocha Mulungu. You are as righteous as God. Hallelujah. How could you be a sinner? When the Bible says you're as righteous as God. How did that happen? Jesus was made sin with your sin. Yes, that you could be made righteous with his righteousness. You understand? So how many sinners do we have here today? Wow, you got it. How many righteous people do we have today? Hallelujah! Now, how many servants do we have here today? How many sons and daughters do we have here today? We'll take a short break and we'll come back. But please be back by in 15 minutes because I'm going to start right then so we don't get too late. So at 15 minutes, I will start. And then we'll go forward. We got a big meeting tonight. We want to give people time to get ready for the service tonight too. So 15 minutes and we'll be right back. Amen. Amen.